Guys, welcome back to the Purpose Podcast, where we talk about all the reasons why we do the jobs we do every single day. This week, I'm joined by someone very special, and we are talking about how to create movement in your life today, uh, which is a very interesting subject in, in, in many ways. We we'll talk about motivation, but mo- motivation and movement is actually very much different in so many different ways. And I'm really excited to bring Jo Mills on to the show today to share her story, how she helps people create movement in their lives uh, through the Tree Academy, which she is the founder of. And she really brings some insight into people's lives and help them create movement. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity to bring someone on, to talk about how to do that and how we can best share that. And Joe, again, I'd just like to throw it over to you for a moment, just to say, thank you so much for coming on. How have you been keeping? What's been going on with you? And yeah, I'd love to hear more from you. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me, Rich. I really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I don't, well, I don't really do these things to, to, to talk about this and perhaps I should do it a bit more. But yeah, I knew a bit about you. So I was like, yes, you've been recommended. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy, happy to come along today. And how have I been? Yeah, it's kind of, it's been an interesting 15 months, hasn't it? It's interesting, been, challenging. Yeah. Um. It's been, it's been, you know, as 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 already we know, the fire alarm has gone off in a part yeah. of the recording earlier today. Um, but you know, we make movements. We, you know, we can pivot, and it's, uh, you know, it's part of the challenges. Everything happens for a reason, as they say. But I think the last fifteen months has definitely uh, changed uh, the dynamic of this. Obviously, as well, I need to also mention that uh, I probably should put a special mention in here very quickly before we continue the episode. Mm, this is sure. quite uh, interesting content. Um, obviously, this podcast has come through uh, a recommendation from Paul Grenier, who has been a podcast ep- uh, episode before, and uh, mm-hmm. he finally put me in touch with you who's also a good friend of yours and uh, I'd just like to give him a quick shout out just to say thank you uh, for uh, taking the time uh, to reach out as well and have the chats that we've been having Uh, and I'm really excited to see where we take this episode because it can go many ways I I don't know how we can fit it all in an hour Um, I (laughs) I don't (laughs) good effort uh, anyway or a good stab in the but, um, but yeah, it's how I would love to hear more about you, what you've been up to, how you know, you've worked in so many different industries over the last, over your career. And it's, it's really quite mm-hmm. insightful to see how that's changed you as a person. You know, we, I know we're going to move on to talk about like, love, passion and how, how we create relationships <laughs> people and stuff like that. It's, there's all sorts that we can discuss. And mm-hmm. it's going to be exciting to see my perspective and the work I do every single day in the community I work with. But it's also going to be quite exciting to see from your perspective with the people you work with every day. Um, mm. but yeah, I'd be really interested to hear more about how, like yourself, what, what you've been up to at the moment. And yeah, we can go from there. OK. Oh, I'm up, I'm up to loads. Um, I'm up to loads. I'm very thankful that I'm up to loads. Uh, it's very articulate of me, wasn't it? But, um, but yeah, I am. I, I, I work with a really sort of diverse range of things, but all centred around people, people and relationships. So I've got one project over here, which is a really long term project, um, which I'm really, really um, sort of like driving through that, really intrigued and interested by it. So it's, a, as I say, a two year project and it's changing the culture of a whole function within a really large organisation. So that's that's really, really interesting with all the relationship dynamics you get. Um, I think I've got more people at the moment. I'm coaching and mentoring more people at the moment than I ever have which is saying which is saying something um and again some of that of course is coming from all of the um the flexibility and the change and the different things you know people have had to contend with over the last 14 months and um something there was um there was a saying that I heard quite a few months ago a lady that I was coaching and she said the way that it felt um, she actually works for it's known I you know I do some one of the companies I do some work with is Google Health and she described it really well and she said it feels like we're, we're it feels like piloting a plane and building it at the same time you know that's what you're doing you're flying this plane you're going along you're having to change constantly 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 and not fall out of the door and not crash it and everything but that's just what you're doing as, as you're going along and can you can you sort of like nodding yeah have you, yeah, have you heard something yeah. similar? Yeah, so I actually, there's actually a saying that, um, you know, jump off the mountain and build the plane on the way down or jump off the cliff and build the plane on the way down. It's a, it's like a double prong to that. It's, it's so mm. insightful, isn't it? It's like, it's so different. It's, it's, it, when, when you hear something like that, it's like, wow, it, it, 
you've got to be able to constantly pivot. And if you can find yourself in a situation where it, you you need to ch- you need to change, you've got something going on. Like I think as individuals, both me and you, but we know others that we all go through challenging times. And mm-hmm. it's not how you ch- you react to the situation because you can just sit there and be stagnant. And some people do, some people don't. Some people realise uh, quite early on that they need to adapt to their situation and their environment they're in to mm. effectively move uh, and pivot with what's in front of them. Um, but I don't, I don't know how that, how you feel about that analogy. That analogy do, do, is that something you resonate with? Because I know it's slightly different. It's the same way, isn't it? It's, it's quite, it's quite similar. We, we could, we've, we've got a lot of talk about in an hour. We could analyse it more, but I think both of them really kind of. Both of them really capture that, do you know what, some things are scary uh, and they really are some change, you know, you confront it, you know, some, you know, we talk about embracing change, you know, we want to embrace change, but it's about having that sort of like real view of it. Sometimes there are some fantastic opportunities there and they're shining bright and you can see them sometimes are really buried and you really have to mine for them. Um, but whatever it is, you are going to have different feelings that are going to come up that are going to challenge you and something that you know something that that I that I say to people is um when they go oh I don't feel I don't feel like doing it I'm waiting for the feeling and I kind of go I can understand that Mm. but that actually doesn't work very well um because when we think about emotion Emotions and feelings are different. So emotion, as I'm sure you know, Rich, emotion is basically energy in motion. It's the the physicality, it's the physiology of our bodies. So we get that sensation come through. That's the emotion. And that gives rise to a feeling, which gives rise to our thoughts. And, you know, let's say, oh, let's say, I don't know, you're at home. Oh, give a personal example. You're at home, you're sat at your desk, you're doing a lot of work, you're doing a lot of reports, you're doing a lot of all these different things. And you kind of, you know, that if you go out for a walk or a run or something like that, you're probably going to feel great, but you don't feel like it. Okay. If you wait until you feel like it, you could be waiting a really long time. So actually knowing that once you get yourself moving and, you know, I sort of say move your body to move your mind. And I've done several posts on it about you know sort of getting outdoors and lots of people have been talking about getting outdoors and of course that's very very true if you're able to get outdoors of course you know sort of quite a few people perhaps aren't able to um but yeah as you sort of it, it makes it makes a real difference so you go outside you move around you have that jog that run then you feel better so a lot of people have it back to front so when you're sort of saying around there around sort of the analogies and how it feels and pivoting and changing we have to kind of realize we aren't always going to feel like it which is why there are a lot of other things today that we'll talk about which is why it's so important to get some movement in your life and not just gather information and labels and different things like that you need to do something about it but you need to push through you need to push through some things i think that's so true you've you've got to just acknowledge I think the first stage in anything anyone does you know if you're going through something mm. challenging you know whether it be a personal relationship uh bereavement I can list loads of job change being sacked you know there's mm. every day people go through challenge and go through really really exhausting situations um all the time even this very minute doing this podcast there's probably someone out there that's really struggling and that's that's absolutely you know mm. it's, it's fine but it's about acknowledging the situation you're in and how you can best adapt to that situation in time. You, it's acknowledging your situation first and foremost. And when you do that, you don't know when that change will happen, but you know that it's going to make a massive, tremendous difference to you as an individual, six, 12, 18 months down the line. And it's it, it, exactly my situation and how we are today. It's that I went through a lot of personal change um, back end of 2019. And that has allowed me as an individual to acknowledge, I started off with acknowledgement. I didn't know it at the time, but I was acknowledging my situation. And after mm-hmm. acknowledging my situation, that then adapted and evolved into actually realizing that I needed to look after myself more. I needed to actually care for what I wanted, I had to understand what I wanted as an individual. Uh, what drives me as a person what motivates me as a person and then through all of that create the movement that I needed to 
to achieve that. I don't know if you've ever felt like that before as well, where you've been through saying that you've um, you've done so much that you've, you, I know you've constantly pivoted throughout your life. So it'd be great to hear like how you've done that and how movement has allowed you to do that. Um, yeah, I have. I, um, I know pivot's quite a, it's quite quite a new word, and uh, which, which 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 is fine. I suppose I think about um, the word. I suppose I connect with the most is evolve. Okay. Um, and how I've literally grown through my career to date and evolved and I was really thinking I was thinking about this this is true I was thinking about this last year as I was digging the vegetable patch and planting some on planting some onions in that sort of that more lockdown time that that we particularly had sort of here here in the UK over last summer and you know we can ask ourselves these kind of questions as we go through life and I don't know if I'd ever really kind of got to the nub of it because I was so busy going forward I was so busy kind of evolving and learning and, and changing beliefs all based on values but I my brother says to me if there's a hard way and an easy way Joe you'll choose the hard way for yourself because that's what I do because I really want to push myself but when I think about the evolution you know what kept me what kept me going um a lot of tenacity an awful lot of tenacity that kind of staying power that I seem to have I honestly I'd love to say I knew where it came from and I don't it's just something that's been in me since I was very young and perhaps being the shorter kid the blonde kid the quieter kid um and perhaps slightly the nerdy one you know in the corner like reading the books the friendly one but kind of I've pretty much always done my own thing even when I started work I used to dress in a particular way not an outlandish way but I remember my dad had these amazing cravats and so I'd say tie a cravat around my waist and wear a waistcoat and I just I've always kind of done my own thing despite perhaps maybe I've been sort of like really honest now, perhaps maybe looking a bit stereotypical, five foot two blonde. Um, but I've just kind of like ignored that and just done my own thing. So from uh, I work for a large insurance company. Well, I worked. I actually I sort of came into the world and did legal work. That was really interesting. And then, to be honest, I got a bit bored um, with the sort of legal work that I was doing and then I worked for a large insurance company and continued with the legal work but stepped into HR human resources um because I've got quite a geeky theoretic theoretical process brain so that appeals but the application of people in my experience in this particular organization the application of people wasn't amazing and so then I made the leap and jumped over into learning and development and that was the best thing that was the best thing I ever did and so if you imagine the quieter one the quieter one the shorter one the blonder one the everything one and I was and I wasn't massively confident but I knew that I could help encourage people I knew when managers came to see me and they had issues with teams I knew that I could listen and help them have a different perspective and I thought, oh, actually, I didn't realise I knew I could do it very well and pe until people started saying, do you know, it really helped. You really helped me see things more clearly. Can I come and have a coaching session with you? And not that I particularly want to date myself, but, you know, before people were really talking about coaching, you know, this was like 25, 25 years ago. And that was how it kind of all started to evolve through. So I found some confidence and some courage because I believed in my own voice and I learned the the tricks of standing up and talking and all and all those sort of things and then I threw myself out of that organization because I really wanted a huge challenge and I started my own business yep. not like the tree academy I was an independent consultant and boy did I go and try and really rock the stereotypical boat and so I went to the um the fire service and I was um training the fire service um, on disciplinary so I was using some of my HR knowledge there so I had had a great time there looking at disciplinary and also looking at aspects of relationships I worked a lot in manufacturing I'd never been you know I'd eaten a lot of Cadbury's chocolate but I'd never been into a manufacturing environment and I was going into some pretty amazing 
places from, you know, tech places to places that then produced the material that went on the outside of trainers, you know, some really hardcore places where people, you know, one place I walked into, I'm being really honest with you, when I went in to get a piece of business and um, he didn't say this to me, but he said this to somebody else. And he said, oh, the last thing I want coming in is like, I don't know, some little blonde person. This, he, this person actually said this. I won the business through that guy because, and this, and this was a long time ago now. And I think perhaps people perhaps don't, hopefully I like to think stereotype as much and clearly I'm older and it's, it's not quite the same. But, um, but yeah, so I pushed myself into so many, so many different businesses. I worked for like local authorities. I've worked with early years um you know as I said before when I started then the the tree academy um within six months I I got an email on my general tree academy inbox that I confess I'm not always amazing looking at all the time and there was the email that opened the door into Google for me they were like oh we're running some some coaching and we've got some leaders as part of Google health um would you be interested in doing that and I nearly missed that email um so I've really, I've really evolved and grown and thrown myself into so many different organizations, which now means when you get me, you get me and all of that that I've done from here to bring to this point. And, you know, none of us like to blow our own trumpet. It makes me feel really uncomfortable, which is one of the reasons why I very, very, well, I've never stepped forward to do like sort of like this before. But I know what I'm doing and I know what I'm talking about and I can really help the people in an organisation see their business with such greater clarity. And I link what I do to profit as well some of the time. People say you can't link learning and development to profit. Well, actually, you can. I can. So anyway, sorry, that was a whole that was a whole load. But, yeah, it's a very long journey, very long story. But, yeah, I'm just really tenacious and I believe in people and I believe in myself. I really believe in myself. I don't just say that. Um, it's taken a lot of years to get there but when you really believe in yourself you've really got your own back it's hard to describe that feeling and I won't connect with it too much because then it it makes you feel emotional and I don't want to do that but when you really really honest honest to truth have your own back you can shift the world amazing that's such an amazing way of looking at it because I I've realized that. I, I realized that if you if you've got your own back, then everything else is it's is a walk in the park. Um and uh, a lot of I think it also comes down to an element of once you have your own back, you can create a team. And then that team have your mm-hmm. create a team that will look after you, a team that will help you through the times that you're struggling, the times that you need the support and grow you into an individual that you didn't realize was 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 there and grow into something that is far more powerful as, as a as an individual like it just it just changes everything it really really does yeah. and if you can create an environment that you're okay in and comfortable in for yourself you can create anything it really it really is it's, it sounds really hard to echo it as a sentiment and mm-hmm. sit there and say you know what this is where I want to go this is that's what I want I'm going to go and get it and I did this last year I I, I remember leaving a boat I was working on in, in the super yacht industry and I I sat there and said well I've got a passion for tech and helping others I sat there mm-hmm. and said, I'm going to go and get that I don't know how I'm going to go get it but hand mm-hmm. on heart I'm going to get it and mm-hmm. I went I, I just I just went and went and found it and it's taken me to where we are today right here doing this podcast as part of true north and how people will find work they're genuinely happy doing and you know i found my the work that allows me to be fulfilled and create an environment for myself that is is me really this this podcast is my podcast it's not the business it's it's i'm in, mm. in with the business absolutely yes but it allows me to create a platform and a space for people to come on and talk about how they have gone through challenges how they can help people get through challenges and create a space to just be able to talk about it and this is what this podcast is for it's not for anything less anything more than that it helps one person every single episode it helps one person Um, and that is the only intention podcast as well and that's really important for me to echo that across into the audience is that 
there might be something in this this podcast that you didn't get any other podcast and it just allows me to create a safe environment for that th- these conversations to happen really and bring on people like yourself to share how that has affected mm-hmm. you and how that you can help people to do that um and this this, this really brings us to the next point because we're talking about movement we're talking about how motivation mm-hmm. uh, how we can drive it and where it starts from but movement is really important in the work you do and i want to know mm-hmm what that looks like to create movement how do you how do you help people do it to create movement people have to be people have to be aware of their whole lives what happens a lot is we get really distracted and so what happened for some people not all but some people over the last 14 to 15 months is those distractions went the distractions of travel, the distractions of maybe working in an office or just working in any environment together with other people, the distraction of being out of the house. And a lot of things got more polarised and it allowed a lot of people some time to think or maybe you feel like you had less time, but it allowed people to sort of think in a different way. And so something that, you know, I talk about it in lots of different ways, but if I suppose the best way for me to say is sometimes I'll talk about success measurements and success means different things to different people. And what what you often find is that people have a feeling of, let's say a feeling of dissatisfaction, maybe something's wrong or something's very wrong. You know, there's a huge, huge sort of scale of this, but something's not wrong, but often people for whatever reason, they don't listen to themselves, maybe because of circumstance, because it's like, oh, this isn't feeling great, but I'm paying these bills or I'm working in this organisation or whatever it is. There's something where we don't actually stop and listen to ourselves effectively. Um, But something that's really important is, you know, those things, I call it the golden 24 hours that we have. When we go out and we spend our life tokens in these golden 24 hours, how how are we measuring our success because at the end of the day you know at the end of this um and at the end of the day or whatever we get that feeling of satisfaction fulfillment purpose and we get that because we do a lot of it subconsciously but we get that because we sort of review the day sometimes in seconds and how did that day feel you know was it great did I work with the team well hey you know for the first time you've you've been into the building you've seen some people in the team you hadn't seen before and we have these different markers that we use and so one of the things to create movement is I'm very direct when I ask, uh, well, I'm very direct when I ask people and often people find that very refreshing. I'll be like, so these markers that you've got on these life, these things that are important, when did you last update them? Yeah, I'm sat here now thinking, when did I update my markers? Um, God. So can I ask you? Yeah. So, go then, so then, so if I put the context, so if I can ask you, so if you imagine that we all have this like this personal ruler yeah we all have this personal ruler and we create it as we you know we sort of like grow up and we go to school or college or uni or whatever and we sort of like move through life and we have these markers where we feel that we're being valued or successful those things that kind of like the coin goes in the slot and that feels that feels really good and um And we also have piled into that other people's expectations. So we build up this personal ruler. And when I speak to people, often I say to them, you know, when did you last look at your measurements? And they go, oh, that's okay. Your personal ruler, are you measuring it on what you want for the life that you have now and the life that you want to build in the future? Or are you actually using an outdated one? So I get people to write down, you know, what's really important. So what would be a measure of this being a really great week for you, that real coin going in the slot? So what would be a measure for you, Rich, of this being a really great week? Name one of those measurements. Um, as many people know, and as you know, I, I'm mm. building my home at the moment, which is my van. Um, yeah. And it is an uphill battle. At the moment, it's more of a downhill battle. Uh, we are we've, we've we've hit the top of the mountain and we're on the way down. Uh, mm. We've done base camp. Uh, we've done we've done the summit and we're on the way back down. Um, the reason I say that well, I'm not saying we're going to have more challenges as we go along. We absolutely are. Um, you know, every if it was if it was a walk in the park, I wouldn't do it. Um, 
one measure that I see myself every single day um, is pro fan progress. Where are we at every week? Where what's and it's, it's so hard to quantify what that looks like. Sometimes it really, really is hard because I sit there and I go, I want to be here by next week. I want to be here by June. I think July 19th is our next deadline, uh, which is the whole interior done, a whole, whole the exterior. Engine rebuild's been already done. That was done a couple of months back. You add that all up and we set markers every week. So it's like now we have this huge list of stuff that we need to get. Before. It's like a huge list mm -hmm. of, he's written out my engineer and he said, look, this is where we're at. This is where we need to go. How we're going to get here effectively mm -hmm. on the quickest time frame. And it is a huge list. And I haven't seen this list or discussed it yet, but now we have a benchmark for how to complete it and how much it's going to cost. And mm -hmm. For me, I've now got a measure of how I'm going to get there and I can use that to in back into the work I do every day. It's like, okay, how can I help someone this week to help me to achieve my goal, which is to finish my home? So can I help someone find something new in their life, you know, a new role, you know, help, at least put them in front of a client? Mm. And then, you know, if they go on and take the job, brilliant. You know, that's a, that's, that's a great week. To be honest, I won't lie. I, I, I'm, I'm a quality of a quantity kind of person. Can I stop you there for a moment and then just ask you, because you were, you were just quite, you know, sort of like your, your van and you've got sort of like your, mm. your success measurements and, and your markers as mm. you go along. So ultimately, th that's clearly so important in your life. Yeah. So why is it so important? Mm. How, how is it earned its, how is it earning its place in your life? Because clearly it takes a lot of dedication, finance, resource, time, everything else. So what's that ultimate? Why is it earning its place in your life mm. to be on your updated pers personal ruler? How, how is it earning its place there? Um, it goes back to when I concepted it. It goes back to the beginning of its inception, which was December 2018. That's a real ballpark sort of. Roundabout. I remember the conversation I had with my, I was working mm. at the ski slope at the time and he was telling me what he wants to do with his girlfriend. And I was like, I want to do that with my girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And I went back to her and it was like limiting beliefs. How can we live like this? Would we have a shower? Would we have a toilet? Would we have you know, the right facilities and all this stuff? It's like, mm -hmm. how could we do it? It's like, how, how, would it, how would it look to us? And I mm -hmm. sat there uh, with the limiting belief you know, going into the end, the end quarter of our relationship. Um, it was like limiting belief, limiting belief, limiting belief. So this idea is in the back of my mind. And it's sat mm. there, it's, it's growing. It's like, it's, it's really building it's, it's the image of what it looks like. And I remember I sat down in February of 2020 and did a, 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 a day, I, I, used to, I still do for daily visualizations, but it changes on a mm. diet. Um, and the reason I do, I did, a, I did a really powerful visualization session and visualized what I wanted and what it looked like. And in that session, mm. I had an image of being somewhere like the Lake District with the van and being out with them. I have German Shepherds, but I want my own little German Shepherd. It's a part of the family. And mm -hmm. one of the loyal, beautiful dogs, uh, guard, they are guarded. They are just brilliant, brilliant animals. Uh, I love them to pieces. Um, and I'd happily have my own. Um, and I had this visualization of being with someone. It wasn't my partner at the time. Uh, actually, she was out of the picture at this point um and it was actually a, a vision of what i wanted and where i wanted to go and what i wanted to achieve and it was like an image of walking through um forests uh where the dog runs off um cut dog comes back i would then sat there outside drinking a coffee he dogs having water people were passing by admiring the van um admire and like asking questions about it how long did it take what did you do I said, oh, I did this, this, and just, 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 just having genuine conversations with people. And it was on like a pebble path with a nice lake behind it and a backdrop. And I visualized that. And I said, I want that. I want to be in that environment. And I want a job that can support it. And I then sat there for six months. Um, I waited. I saved money. I really, really saved money. Because I, I knew that's where I wanted to go. That's what I wanted to achieve. And I was telling people on the boat I was working at the time, I was like, oh, you want, yeah, you want this, 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 this. And they, they sat there and like threw all these ideas at me. It's like, no, if you're going to do this, you want a Mercedes Sprinter. I actually ended up getting a Mercedes Sprinter. 
Um, and it's, a, it's an absolute beast. Um, but I sat there for months and months and months concepting and deciding where I wanted to go with it. I couldn't narrow it down. I'm a big believer in the universe. Um, I got very close to my stepbrother during the first lockdown. Um, mm. I actually found out that his best mate runs a custom, uh, it actually builds bespoke um, vehicles, like hot rods, mm. uh, van conversions. He's very talented, very, very mm. talented. And uh, he put me in touch with him. And this was August 2020. Um, he said, look, mate, come down in September. We'll, we'll pick a weekend and I'll find a van. I was like, we can find it. We can strip it. We can do this. We can do that. And I was like, you know what? I'll put some faith in you. And God, did I put faith in that man. And I have watched that van turn. Like it was, we are talking one man's trash, another man's treasure. And it was that seeded idea that I had at the beginning of 2020 that has created a pedestal for what I want because that's where I want to go. But I know in myself that when I get to that next goal, um, when I get that daily visualization, it will change. I will have that daily visualization and there'll be something missing in it. And I will say, what do I want next? I'm the type of person, I, as human beings, I think we're all like this. We get to a milestone and we go, okay, I'm, I'm here. Do I enjoy it and then do something else? What, what's, the next, what's the next bridge per se? Because we always try to find them. We always go out there and try and find them. Um, I've got the job that supports it. I work fully remotely if I want to. The van mm-hmm. and the box can go anywhere in the world. I, I'm in WeWork right now. We have a WeWork policy that allows me to work anywhere in the country. I believe anywhere in the world from any office. Mm-hmm. That in itself is absolutely it's like amazing. It's like you've got the world in your hands, really. You can go anywhere you want. And I just said to myself, I want to be able to travel and get paid to do it. And I set that goal about three years ago as well and mm-hmm. to achieve that I believe the van is the way to and uh, since then uh, you know the time patience uh, the progress uh, although I invest into someone to help me do this he teaches me so although I'm paying I'm paying for experience as well I'm not just paying for someone to go and do it and not see the, how the product was made I've seen every single step of this van conversion I've seen every single step and I can go away and probably take a bloody good shot in the dark and try and do it myself again. Um, and I wouldn't because I, I believe any van conversion is a team sport. It's a, it, and this, this goes for anything in life. And this is why I think it's great to acknowledge where you are as an individual, have your own back first and then have someone else's. I was a massive tangent, but I hope that answers your question in a, in a, in a roundabout <laughs> that way. Great. And this is, this is why I love to, you know, a huge part of what I do is listen. Is, is listen to people because it was you were painting this picture and actually I don't know if you realized you were doing this but really brilliantly you were just you were describing you know describing that movement because keeping keeping in front of us I mean you are particularly diligent and particularly tenacious about it so anybody watching or listening to this I think it's really important that we all approach it with a different level of fire depending on what we have to give so, you know, if you're if you're listening to or, or watching this and thinking, oh, my goodness me, that sounds amazing. But I just don't know if I've got that uh, to, 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 to kind of do it. It's, it's fine because it translates. You know, you can have small fires, you can have big fires. And I think it's it's really sort of like connecting to whether you do it through visualization, as you said, clearly you found that really powerful. Um, you know, sometimes people will do it by, you know, by. By going on a long walk and thinking, you know, well, several long walks, you know, doing this in one walk is, is a bit of an ask, um, even when you have Coach Joe by your side. But, um, you know, sort of going along going, well, you know, what are some of the things that I do want? So this personal ruler that I have got and the things that I am measuring, maybe I've got that job with a particular level of responsibility. And I liked I liked the status of that role or whatever it was. And do you know what? Actually, actually, do you know the headache that I really get from that? And I used to love working in that particular sector, but do you know what? I don't anymore. And there was a lady I, I um, actually, no, it wasn't a lady. It was a guy that I was working with and he wanted a complete career change. He was a solicitor and he thought that actually his parents would be really, um, really upset with him if he changed career. You know, when you're with sort of like apparently on the outside a grown adult, 
Um, and I think, you know, we can all understand why people make decisions based on, you know, approval and stuff like that. And to cut a very long story short, um, he went to become a car mechanic because it was something that he really, really wanted to do when he was um, growing up, little boy growing up. He sort of taken things apart and put them back together again. And he knew he wanted to do something like that. But out of complete love, you know, out of complete love, his family, you know, said, oh, well, you know, let's have a more secure career because the family didn't come from a very secure, um, secure background. And that was something he really wanted to do. But, you know, we were then talking about somebody that had gone through, been really successful and was a very successful practicing solicitor. And then, but you know what, Joe? The spare time that I have, I really love. He liked to build engines, you know, just, just do all, all sorts of things. And we, we addressed the question, is it a hobby? Do you want to make it your living? Will it take the joy out of it? And no, and he changed. And mm. he, ch he ran an amazing, or he does run now, actually, um, an amazing business. And um, because, well, he doesn't need a solicitor because <laughs> clearly there's different things that people specialise in. But yeah, creating that movement and creating that momentum, if you're going to put that energy and that effort, because it takes energy and effort to do anything really, okay, to varying degrees, go after what you want mm -hmm. for the life that you have now and not something that you had back then. You know, perhaps when you sort of first started relationships and it might have been, this was what I was looking for. Well, actually, ide our ideas grow and evolve. You know, very often in early relationships, people will look for, the person they can do everything with where I uh, from a position of wisdom she says um that you know as, as you do as you as you move through life we have we have people for different you know for different things so you might have you know a friend that you go on holiday with or a friend that's really good at listening and finding one person that can be your everything is a romantic eye is a romantic ideal which is lovely and it's made in books and films but it's a human construct so actually it is, it, is a human the, it really is it, 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 it is and, it, and it's wonderful and it sells all sorts of things and it's fantastic but people get misled I mean I have to say after saying you know I I, co I coach leaders I go into businesses I coach individuals teams I work across organizations and cultures so that's that real sort of like macro level if I bring it to a micro level if that if that if that sort of like sounds okay as well is if you think about some of the people that you've helped and the things that you've done, you know, last year I un un unintentionally but very lovely saved a marriage because this person came to me, this guy, and he was like, oh, my wife doesn't really get this and doesn't get that. And I listened and understood. And it was I was supposed to be doing leadership coaching, but then suddenly it sort of got segued into could we just talk about this? And actually, this person had been holding the belief that a lot of people have that their wife was there to fulfill every single kind of, and I mean this in a nice way, but every single kind of everything for them. You know, a new hobby that I've taken up, I'd love for us to go out and do that together. And do you know what? I really want to go buy a motorbike, but my wife's not really enthusiastic about that. And I'm like, why, why is that not okay? Let's have a look at why that isn't okay. And, and he's sort of grown up with this, but we will do everything together. And if not, there's something wrong with our relationship. Like, but do, do you actually believe that? Do you actually really? And he went, well, well, actually, no, I, I, I don't think I do. Mm. Oh, gosh, am I being really unreasonable? I said, well, you, depending on how you're driving this thing, you could be coming across as really unreasonable. And um, I didn't sit down with the two of them. That's not my specialism. It's not what I do. People can go to relate. And, you know, I like to recommend people that are specialists in their areas. Mm. Um but yeah, as a result, he went home and he had, it sounds that straightforward and it was, and he had a conversation and he just said, you know, I really get it now and I didn't get it before. And there's probably loads of things you want to do and perhaps you're not doing. Anyway, so yes, blah, 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 just saved a marriage. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That's so interesting. Like, it's so interesting to see how people, uh, you, you think you're in the right, you're in the wrong. Um, yeah, I, I personally, family stuff at the moment, but there is something going on in our family at the moment. There's mm. a long-term relationship, mm. and you're just very unhappy. And it's and sadly, it has it has hit a point where you know they've decided. I'm not going to opinionate on it too much, no. um, but it's it's got to a point where you know I think it comes back to happiness as well, doesn't it? It's like 
although you think you're being unreasonable and it's just like you've got to look inside as well this is where it comes back if you've got your own back and like you have to ask yourself these really vulnerable questions to yourself that no one else is going to answer the, them for you um people can advise you like you have you advise someone you've you've just been a listener which is so so powerful um i, I said this on a I, I said this on a little i did a mental health post about two weeks ago and i said the most powerful thing you can do for someone this, this week is listen and i said the reason i say that is because when i needed someone someone had my back someone listened someone was there for me whether it was a best mate a parent my my sister um i can go on and list uh, uh, loads but the point is is that it allowed me as an individual to work out where i wanted to what i wanted to do where where i wanted to go and in what happened here with it was happiness that was my issue that was where i realized i had a problem that i had to address personally it was actually and uh, i always come back to it and it's the, it's in the work we do every single day here as a business you in western society as it's put as I, someone has corrected me in an episode and I, i'm very respectful of this we choose who we marry the place we live and the job we do and if you're not mm. happy in the areas of your life normally you question it and if one and you blame mine was my job i blamed my, my partner at the time actually it was the job that was the issue not the partner but i was ignoring i was being ignorant i was being completely oblivious to the fact that it wasn't her and that I was doing god awful hours for little pay and didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. That was what it was. But at the time, I didn't realize that. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really, you've got to come to terms with these things sometimes. You've got to realize what, and every, it's just acknowledging it. And it's, this is why where I am today with the podcast and everything else that we're doing is because I've acknowledged those issues and addressed them to allow me to bring tech back to a community and serve a bigger purpose from that. Hence the podcast. Um, but on the back of that, we've obviously covered quite a bit of ground here and creating movement is so, so important. How would you like to take it now? Would you like to bring it into the field I work in? People like, obviously you work with places like Google um and the experiences you've had there are probably quite insightful as well so where would you like to we can go we can take it down a road of mm. my sector and what i do or we can go on an opposite tangent and take it more down the road of what you do today with people you serve mm, i think with i think well, there was something that so as i was listening as i was listening to you there and you were talking about happiness and that's a whole other conversation because we can't expect to be happy all the time however it's it's a gauge it's a gauge but i know happiness is mm, happiness can be overused some, some 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 you know some of the time because there are as i say we have a universe we have a universe of emotion at our fingertips and it's about some of those other some of those trillion those other emotions are really really helpful and really really useful and actually in trying to create some movement um we want to go towards some we want to move towards something that that maybe draws us or attracts us but we need to know we need to know what we're it helps to know what we're driven by in order to do that and it also helps to know you know what we're getting back from those things in our life like you said you know we've got relationship here but then actually the discomfort was coming from the job and we don't always see those things so actually talking about how we're feeling um sometimes people say oh we're talking about how we're feeling well we're, we're human beings we have the hardware and the software we come in this 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 human package you know and I, I write quite a bit about being human and it's really important that we understand that so when we're trying to gather momentum on stuff when we're trying to get movement and gather momentum we need to understand that sometimes we aren't going to feel like doing something like I said before they're getting up going and having a walk or a run or, or or whatever it is um, although having an Alsatian or whatever sat there going, take me for a walk is an incredible, do I adore dogs. Um, in particular, I love those dogs as well and collies. I've got, well, but, um, I've got three and at the moment I've got three <laughs> and they now associate me with the back door. Uh, since right. Was, and they like go, oh my God, he's up. We're going out. We're going out. We're going, we're going to throw the ball. It's time for a walk. It's yeah. so exciting. Yeah. And it's it's amazing. Uh, I wouldn't change them for the world. Sorry. Anyway, I went on a tangent. There. No, 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 not at all. Well, this is part. This is this is this is great. Um. So yeah, getting that momentum, it, it's kind of 
that that movement and that momentum, it, it's getting some different things. So something that you've also touched on that's really important is environment. And is is having those things in our life. What was it you say about? Was it who you love and where you live and your and the job that and the job that you do? And you know, our, our whole lives, we we create with every single decision that we make in every in every single moment clearly our sort of like our subconscious and our our nervous system is deciding to let us breathe so without going to that level but you know every single decision that that we make um to meet that person to not meet that person to send that email to not send that email or whatever the whole scale and complexity drives what we have around us in our life you know when we say yes to something over here what are we actually saying yes to and what are we saying no to at that time? So it's really, it's really having a much clearer view on your life and thinking, you know, what am I getting from these different places? How am I actually feeling about it? Let's zoom in. Let's really zoom in and focus on something. So, for example, what you do, work. Somebody comes to you and says, do you know what? I don't, I don't think I'm happy in what I'm doing at the moment. And I use the term happy. But I don't think I'm happy or I'm, I don't think I'm fulfilled or there isn't enough growth there. What tends to happen is we run out of growth, or we hit a ceiling and we want to be somewhere else, or maybe people are behaving in quite a juvenile way or, or whatever it is, but it isn't giving us what we need. It isn't giving that maturity and that, that growth. So I bet you find that when you talk to people, it's okay, well, so, so what do you want? In, in a role, what does a, what does a job or a role, what, what does it need to to give you what what do you want to get out of it and this is an activity that I do with people it's really powerful and it's um what do you want your what what do you want from a job or a role we have lines of post-its down the wall what do you want from a job or a role and what feeling does that give you you know what's simple we're not naming the job and it's really you, you could do you could actually do this with people um so people will go through and people might say things like you know they might say about salary depending on their circumstance they might say about the location, they might say um, autonomy, learning, what other things are important to you about a job along those sort of lines? So let's kind of like pull this, what else um, is important think, about a job or a role? For me, it's the culture of the company, the mission, the, culture. the vision, um, okay. the, the, the autonomy of the role. Um, it'd be pretty, mm -hmm. I'd be pretty hard done, like the, the package is, I'm not necessarily bold about the salary. Like I won't lie, I've been offered stupid money in the past, but I know I'll be unhappy in the work I'm doing because I'm doing god awful hours, stressed mm. out. I want to come to work every day knowing that my boss isn't going to bite my head off. I've had jobs where my boss has bitten my head off or uh, has had the worst mood. Sorry, the worst mood swing in the world. Mm. Where he's gone from nicest person one day to the most awful person the other day. And because I'm a highly sensitive individual, like mm. I can't deal with that level of radic emotion. It just doesn't sit in my vocabulary. I just can't, I, I can't be in an environment with someone who's no. bouncing who's like, like that. Yeah. So strong yeah. leadership, strong, strong leadership, strong relationships, autonomy, you know, creativity. So there are those sorts of things. And then you look at, okay, so in a job where you were able to have autonomy, yeah. how does that make you feel? So in a job where you have autonomy, what what's the feeling you get from that it's not a level of freedom but it is it's like it's really hard to quantify actually um it's like i know that i can do my work to my schedule and know i can do it to a high enough standard that is is, is fair and just to my nd for it. that's okay. the and what feeling does that so we're going to eat this out till you get a feeling so i'm after a feeling so you're explaining, which is great, but this all goes to a feeling. So you're giving the reasons behind it. So ultimately, when you have the autonomy, you don't have to explain yourself. You have that free, you have that. How does that make you feel? What does that give you? It gives, it gives me less stress. I'm not anxious. I'm not. I'm, I'm so what's the plus side of that? I'm coaching you now. So you're less anxious. You're not stressed. What are you? Happier. What's that? I'm, I'm you're happy. Okay. Yeah, I'm happier. Like, I, I, I'm not. I, I compare it. I actually compare it to my last photo I worked on. I, I, I woke up dreading the feeling of getting out of bed. I, mm. I, I used to dread the feeling of getting on a, on a tube, sorry, getting on a train to London at 7.30 in the morning I, and then mm. coming down here 
uh, for 8 30 9 o'clock doing a full day of work then i'm spending i'm spending nearly four hours of my day commuting probably of which the hour on the on the train i'm probably doing work so i'm spending an extra two hours because nothing else to do i'm spending an extra two hours of my day at my desk when i don't want to be and i don't think anyone wants to be and this comes back to the corporate rat race and all the rest but i'm not going to dive into that's the whole conversation is. <laughs> that's the next one yeah it's a it's a gut-wrenching feeling it really is a gut-wrenching feeling when you sit there and you go oh like it's 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 awful it's like anxiety fueling it's it doesn't it doesn't sit with me right i, I get like really anxious and not not panic attacks but like it, it sends me into a state of panic and i don't want to be in that position where i'm feeling like that so i sit there and say you know what this is how can i correct this how can i make the environment i need for myself and I've just visioned it and grown it and expanded on that. And it's allowed me to create a environment where I can do what I need to do to my schedule to, to my, and, and it just takes all those worries away and it creates the space to allow me to do my job to the standard that I feel is good for what I'm capable of. Um, and, and some, and the, the thing is when I'm in a, that space, I tend to do more. Um, if I'm in a space of anxiety, um, you know, worry, um, caution, I, I uh, mistrust and have someone like a chip on my shoulder, like the man. Mm. Um, when you have that worry and it's like, I, 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 that's what causes self-doubt. That's what causes my self-doubts. I know that I can do this job and not have my boss doubt my abilities because yeah. it's, it's really... It's so hard to quantify because I'm sat here trying to explain it in a way that can best articulate the, the emotion of it. And there are so many emotions to it. And that's that's where I feel my where I am at the moment. And I, I've spoken about this before. And it's not it's like a motivator, but the job I do is, is tech recruitment. Absolutely. But I don't I, I don't like saying I'm a, I'm a recruiter. That's really important to me. I don't like saying it. Because it's not what that's what I do. It's not why I do it. What I what my why is helping people find a role or work aligned with their passions, lifestyles, and values. That's that's actually my why. That's that's what I love doing. And I don't tell people I'm a recruiter. They work it out based on what I've said, and they go, "Oh, that's cool." And it's different. And it's they remember that. They don't remember you when you say recruitment. They do know. They go, oh, I'm a recruiter. They go, oh, all right. It's, it's, it's seriously it's it, when you say why you do something and not what you do it just changes the whole dynamic um ah yes i met simon Sinek about three years ago so oh, yeah oh, really? <laughs> yes. a little mic drop a little mic did you meet him at a, was it was it in passing or is it uh was it no a, we were having lunch no we were <laughs> no we were he he just, been a talk, I, just a mic drop sorry. go for um, it there, there are i i do a lot of i do a lot of fast tracking um, and I'm aware my head is holding some things because I've been listening to what you've been saying about environment and I want to kind of like bring it, bring it back to the movement. But yeah, just to like time out. Um, I tend to do some, yeah, I do fast tracking. And Simon Sinek, I came across him quite a few years ago when he first made his TED talk and he spoke about the golden circles. And um, and I looked at it and I thought, that's a really interesting way of putting it. Now I know he's got a marketing background, so I was and love all you marketers out there um but he has a marketing background so i was aware there was like to be some kind of spin on it but it was really really interesting in the way that he put it across um what he teased out he was very clever actually because what he then teased out is you know we've spoken for millennia we know for millennia about tribes and coming together as tribes and what he has done really effectively is around when he talks about, you know, we want to be around people who believe what we believe, um, you know, and, and that's and that's very, that's very, very true. And so some of the groups I was working with before I started Tree Academy, some of the teams I was working with, I did quite a bit of why work, mm -hmm. helping individuals find what their individual why was and that was before he's you know he barely had a website there were hardly any sort of resources or anything like that and I had his book that I have on my shelf signed obviously and to Joe and um and it was really really helpful and it was really really useful and I think when we look out there to the people that are out there again Brene Brown I remember when she made her first TED talk clearly she's come a huge way 
yeah. come a huge yeah. way since then and people know a lot more um know a lot more about her and I think it's important to be aware of those people but lots of the other ones as well perhaps that that aren't so sort of sort of out there with the marketing but it's um and I'm trying to come back to, to what to, to sort of like what we talked about yes I met him he was at a talk and I went up to thank him um and I I was a bit I was a little bit nervous actually and I don't I and I don't tend to get like that because people are people you know maybe if I met Elon Musk I might kind of go oh but um because he's he's sensational sensational person um however I met him and we had a conversation and to be frank he was signing the books he was kind of like hardly even like looking up at people so I waited until last because I knew I wanted to have a conversation with him and he took the book and I said oh I just want to thank you mm. and he looked up at me and you know we all we all have egos don't we and I, and I just went I just want to thank you actually I said you made that first TED talk and I listened to it and I created some some work from it and you know I've really sort of like helped some you know helped some teams with it with some of the themes he did some other talks on um if you sort of search him some of his early talks they were fantastic I was interested in the military we ended up having a brilliant conversation a brilliant brilliant conversation and it was and it was great and we kind of I suppose we saw one another and and it was great and there are other you know there are other people David Marquet um turn this ship around there there are lots of people that have been the most amazing leaders and they've gone out there and done it and they've got the results and they're the people that I really like to talk to Margaret Heffernan do you know Margaret Heffernan yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr Margaret Heffernan she wrote a book well it's up there actually Willful Blindness and she spoke a lot about willful blindness um, before she wrote the book. Mm. And I have to be very careful what I say about this, but let's just say she gave me the confidence in an organisation that I worked for within the last 10 years um, to really speak out about some behaviour that was very, very wrong indeed. And she talks in her book, you know, sort of like willful blindness, all about people that do turn a blind eye and we tend to go with the majority of what people think. So the kind of. I want to put this right so I don't sound. The kind of people that I admire and that inspire me, because I think it's important to have. To have a very rich environment around ourselves and not just sort of shut ourselves off into one thing another reason why i was really intrigued to talk to you because you've clearly done that with with your life like i've done that with my life you know elizabeth gilbert the author she is at, okay she wrote a book called eat 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 pray love mm -hmm. amazing book incredible writer if you search for talks that she's made she talks about creativity she's constantly updating and evolving she's an evolving human being she evolves what she thinks so people like that I made myself a little list here because there are so many people have you read Mo Gordat's book I honestly should read more than I actually do um solve for, solve for happy and that's the only reason I'm saying and get audible listen to books if you're doing some more traveling and stuff now listen and have a notebook so more Mo Gordat um there, there's oh there's like Professor Linda Gratton who is in the top 15 movers and shakers on the whole planet. She is professor of management at London Business School, and she runs the world's leading program on human resources. So when I listen to people, when I look out to people, um, they're who I listen and kind of look out to. I don't mean I listen to everything they say and I follow and then I mm -hmm. just kind of like regurgitate that because too many people do stuff like that. And I listen to people and basically it's a cobble together of what everybody else thinks. But it's very important to get a temperature check on the micro and the macro of what's out there. It, it's just really important to realise the planet that we live on and kind of what's going on beyond our own world. And it helps us keep evolving and designing our environments, you know, like you are. And the things that we're recommending to one another and hopefully, you know, people are listening to this, hearing that we're roaming all over the place. But you know what, if you want to create, if you want to create some movement, get excited about your life and you know what it can be really hard to get excited about your life when maybe you've been doing the homeschooling or you're the CEO of a particular business or you're traveling a lot now or whatever it is and you've got all these calls on your time and I would implore you to just stop mm. 
just stop and really feel what you are feeling and go, right, have I got, okay, have I got what I want in my life at the moment? I haven't got that immediate answer. Okay, well, that's okay, but I've got a kind of feeling. I don't know what it is. And the part of our brain that processes words doesn't process feeling. We, we can't find the language. So we have to give people time to think about it. But I would implore you to just stop and to think about it and to look out in the world and think what's going on out there and what can you create for yourself and who have you got around you, your environment, who supports you, who encourages you, you know, who does that? We cannot do this by ourselves. Yes, I was tenacious and yes, I drove through. I have an amazing mentor. I have an amazing mentor also happens to be my best friend. And no matter what happens, he's all, oh, that, mm -mm, okay, don't like to do this one. Yeah, yeah, he's there for me, no matter what, all the time, he's there supporting, not going, oh, well, you can do this and whatever, you know, he's there and he's like realistic, but he constantly, constantly supports me. And that's, that's the person that I am to other people and to businesses. And you can create the movement if you want to, if you just stop and listen to yourself. That's amazing. And that I want to know if that's your one bit of advice. If you'd, I, I love Richard Reed's book, If I Could Only Tell You One Thing. Um, and it's, it's, if I could only tell you one thing, what would it be? So I'm going to ask you, if you could tell me one thing, what would it be? The one thing, environment. Environment can make or break. No matter how much you have your own back and you believe in yourself. I know Brene Brown talks about braving the wilderness, an amazing book, and you walk quite a solitary path. I've done that my whole life. Don't mean I don't have friends, but I have friends. But you walk a solitary path and I've done that. But if there's one thing that you look at in your life you look at the landscape of your life and the environment. You look at who you have in your life and who supports you. If people drain you, get rid of them. If for whatever reason, if for whatever reason there isn't that kind of that connection or something like that, no, you know, really, really your environment and who you have around you and who supports you and what you look at, you know, what you have about. In my office, I'm surrounded by books. I adore books. I live and I look out at the countryside. That's really important to me. I have got an old camper van and I call him Barnaby and I love him and he's amazing. And I go on adventures and I, I'd love a 2CV. You probably don't know what I bet. Yeah, I'd love a really old 2CV. Have things in your life that you love, whether it's the friends and the job that you do. You are allowed to have that. You are allowed to work for that. You are allowed to have fun. Um, but we really need to get in touch with this universe of emotions that we have at our fingertips to do that, to really create that environment that we want and that we deserve and that we have to just keep evolving that all the time. So that would be, yeah, environment, sort it out. <laughs> sort it out. And you literally hit like every nail on the head there. It's like if there's someone out there that's not informing you and is, is draining your energy just get rid just just get get out get out like it's start over i've my circle and i noticed this earlier on um i i'm, I'm very much someone who gives back as much as possible i've helped people find jobs not i'm not talking about work i do now but previously mm -hmm. i've helped people find jobs that have informed their their life informed their decisions and and, and you know, gone to do some incredible things. And I've given them the, the foundations to change their lives. And they've then taken that and then done nothing with it. Um, it happened to one person I know, he spent, um, he took a job, uh, I actually helped him get the job through a recommendation because I worked there previously. And he only did five, six months there. And then um, he moved to Scotland, which is absolutely fine. Um, and um, it, it was, I just didn't, we haven't I had it happened and I was like okay what it was never it was always a take it was never never a give back and um just people random who randomly appear throughout my life just because they want to catch up but they're not willing to commit to it and it's just it's it's nice to do those sort of things but quite simply it sounds really stubborn but I don't have the time for it I have time for people who want to spend time with me and have value and want to want to give you know give back to me and help me in times of need and come to my doorstep when I need them and you know through bereavements very recently I had 
um, had something uh, happen and it was it was a shock. It was like out of the blue and we were all like absolutely taken back by what happened. Uh, mm. And I had four of my very good friends on my doorstep that day. I had all of, all of them came out and went for walks with me, every single one. And I was like, wow, that's the sort of thing. That's the sort of people that I can really call on to help. And it's, it's, that, that's the people I want in my life. I don't want, you know, Bob and Sally and, you know, Jeff. It's, I don't, I'm not interested in that. But I think, Joe, that is probably a, a really good point <laughs> to wrap this episode of the Purpose Podcast. Right. <laughs> it, yeah, I think that was, that was a really powerful end to it. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we, we finish up on this? No, I, I don't. I, I don't think so. I just I'm really I'm really glad that I made the decision to say yes. Um, I do say no to all sorts of different things, and no is really healthy. And clearly, there's a whole landscape in between yes and no. But I'm really, really, um, I'm really, really glad that we got to chat. And I know we've had several chats, and we were talking about doing this before. And we both have very, very busy lives, so I'm really, really glad that now. Um, you know, in this warm, lovely, warm summer weather now that we've um, we've been able to have this chat. And I think this was probably going to be the first of, you know, the first of the first of many. I think we've kind of like lit a, lit a touch paper. And I really hope that people watching or listening um, have been able to kind of follow and roam around our conversation and at least get some essence about the movement and the momentum um, that that may inspire them to bring into their lives to do something different because why would you not want to do something different if you're not feeling great so um so no. yeah th thank you it's been a brilliant brilliant yeah. chat no thank you and guys tune in next time when we take someone else down the post podcast um please check out joe and the work she does it is incredible uh changing lives every single day um guys thank you so much for joining me this week and i will see you soon